start out by going to the Too Tall Toby website. We want to give a huge shout out to catop.io, who's sponsoring this week's featured challenges. And the first featured challenge we modeled up using FreeCAD, and now we're going to model this one up using OnShape. So here we go. We're at TooTallToby.com. We're up at the top here where we've got some featured challenge models. Of course, if you sign up for Too Tall Toby's Practice Models Premium, you can access a library of over 200 of these 2D to 3D CAD challenges, all filtered by different tags. You could do all sheet metal challenges or all you know tier one, tier two, tier three, the different difficulty. Uh, sign up today, get started for free, and then if you really like the app, you can unlock the entire library. So we're going to do this one here, 250908, up in the featured challenges. Click here to begin and go. And so the question here is, what is the mass of this part in xx.x grams? And uh, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, anytime I'm trying to come up with a 3D model, the first thing I ask myself is, are there a lot of dimensions that are coming together at one spot? Because that would be a good location for the origin. In this model, there are all these dimensions are coming together right here. I'm also going to be solving this using Onshape. And Onshape is a fantastic tool for kind of laying out everything in one sketch and then doing multiple extrusions coming off of that sketch. So I think my first sketch is basically just going to look like this entire drawing view here. So let's use this open in new window function and we'll move this over here, this window over here to my other screen. And then let's bring up on shape and see if we can solve this thing. So here we go. We're going to go into on shape here. I'm going to solve this using uh, my free seat of on shape, but I'm going to put this into the public space. So that way, if anybody out there gets stuck trying to model this one up, you can just search the on shape public space for my document and then you can uh, actually examine the history tree that I'm creating right now and uh, maybe use that to help get unstuck so let me just move this chat over a little bit here and here we go get into on shape create document 25-09-08 PCR Duino that way you can search for that text in the public space. The default units that I work in are millimeters, so I'm pretty confident that I'm already set up in millimeters. So I'm just going to jump right into the top plane, begin a sketch, N key to get normal to. I'm using the S key to bring up this menu here, and I'm going to create a circle. The circle is going to have a diameter of 60. And you'll also notice that that circle is extruded here off of the bottom of the part. So even though it's only a, a partial circle here in this view, like there's no need for me to kind of sketch and trim this up like so. It's a full circle over here on the bottom of the part. So I'm going to sketch that full circle there. Then I'm going to create another sketch here of a circle. I'm already in the circle command, actually. So here we go. S key circle. I escaped out of it. And we'll make this circle here a diameter of... 13, it's 13 through. And then we could hit escape, click on this edge here. We could use the offset entities command, and then we could offset that to a distance of four. It's got a four millimeter sleeve there. Now we're ready to start getting in there and adding in some of those other lines. And one of the first things you could do here would be maybe to add this rectangle with a dimension of six wide by 22 high. And then you could jump into your dimension command. So I'm just using the S key to access that little menu, but you could use your dimension command to kind of locate this rectangle and that might give you a nice anchor point to create some of the lines that you're going to be creating as you kind of run over and down through the rest of the sketch so that's something that i often will do i'll just draw in a couple of of elements um, and then i'll kind of lock them in and then i'll move on with the rest of the sketch rather than trying to sketch the whole shape all at once it depends on how complicated the sketch is but certainly for more complicated geometry like what we're looking at in this sketch this is a, a strategy that i use often i'll just kind of draw a couple of lines Lines. I'll, I'll add in some dimensions to those lines. So this one's at 35 degrees relative to that top edge. It's at uh, five degrees relative to the other edge. So let me hit escape and drag that down a little. And then S key dimension. Make sure the five is going, you know, the correct direction. So five degrees there. And then this is 10 millimeters for that wall thickness. And then this is um, out to that side wall from the, the center plane there is looks like 33 millimeters. So if you, if you go through and you use this technique when you're working with complicated sketches, sketches that have a lot of entities, it's kind of like a divide and conquer or like a bite size approach where you're just trying to get a little bit at a time, little by little kind of work through that model. So now we've got a line here that comes off of this one and goes right to our center plane and then comes straight down and then goes back. And it looks like there's a 10 millimeter wide dimension on that. So if I put my mouse over this line, I can kind of wake up that line and make sure that those two are parallel. 
So bring that line over like so, bring it down like so. And then um, this one, actually, the math works out that this one is also parallel to those lines, but the dimensions are called out in the print. So maybe I'll just make it uh, kind of independent. So click here. Uh, this line is going to be per perpendicular. You can see that 90 degree dimension. Uh, this one's going to be parallel to this line here. So kind of wake up that line and then get that parallel to show up. And then I can hit escape and then just take this point and this point and press I to make those two coincident. See there, my sketch got a little tangled up. That can be a little confusing, especially if you're newer to 3D CAD or newer to on shape. So I could take this line here and kind of drag it off to get that untangled. Now I'm going to go to my smart dimension or to my, sorry, to my dimension command. I'm going to type in 10 millimeters. I'm going to create a dimension here from this plane to this line. That dimension is going to be at 25 degrees. And then it looks like this line has a relationship to the center point of the circle. So you see we've got this little green line here going right to the center. So that's indicating that this, from the center point coming out, you get right onto this angle dimension here. And that's how you can kind of lock down that final angle. So we could hit escape here, take this center point, take this line, press I, and oh yeah, that line goes black. That's what we want. And then we can create a dimension here from the, the center to uh, either this line or this point, either way. Uh, sometimes I'll pick the line just to kind of lock down the angle. That one's gonna be at 33. And uh, then we can, we got our sketch tangled up again here, hit escape, untangle the sketch. Okay, this happens when you get into complicated sketching and, and uh, it's just something that you kind of learn how to deal with. We'll make that 10 millimeters. And then it looks like we just got the one final dimension here from this plane to this. That's gonna be at 65. Oh, and the height to that. That one's going to be at 33. Did I lock down the width of that one? No, got to lock down the width still too. And 10. So you can see that as we're going through that sketch, all those entities are changing from blue to black. And that's really what we want. We want to make sure that those sketches are changing from blue to black, meaning that sketch is becoming fully constrained. So now we can take that geometry and we can S key extrude. And when we go to extrude that geometry, we're going to hit the space bar on our keyboard because the space bar clears everything. And then we're able just to go through and kind of pick and choose which contours or which geometry we actually want to extrude. So I'm going to go through and pick this geometry here. All those, all those entities are going to get selected for this extrusion. And then I'm going to reverse the direction and I'm going to extrude that down to a height of four millimeters. So that's that kind of lower region. Now I can show that sketch. And then with that sketch shown, I can, I can can maybe click a region from that sketch and then I can jump into the extrude command again so extrude and now this geometry here is going to be that region it's going to be this region here it's going to be this region down here just kind of go and pick all that geometry and now that's going to come up to a height of 10 millimeters and then I could pick this region here and I can choose to extrude that region and that geometry is going to get extruded to a height of 16 millimeters but that one's going to start at an offset so you can see here that this it doesn't start flush to this face here. It actually starts at an offset of four millimeters. And so we can reverse the direction of that offset. And yes, that looks good. That's what we wanted there from that one. So that's offset at four millimeters. There we go. And now all that's left to do is just to add in those fillets. So we jump into the fillet command here. So S key fillet. And the fillet here is going to have a radius of 13 millimeters. And we pick this edge here to fill it at 13. And then we pick this edge here to fill it at 13. And we pick this edge down here to fill it at 13. And then we pick this edge here to fill it at 13. And when we pick that last one, all of a sudden the preview goes away. And in on sheep, it even gives you a warning in the tree here. It shows up in red here in the tree, letting you know that that fillet is a problem. It's not working for some reason. Hit the green check mark. It doesn't work for some reason. So if I double click here on this uh, fillet feature and I unselect that, that one single edge, there now all of a sudden the preview does show up so for some reason that fill it it doesn't it doesn't want to complete it doesn't i think it's because we're eliminating this gap here and kind of changing this edge id and it, this happened not only in on sheet but it's happened to me in other cad systems when i've tested this model and so you have to come up with a workaround right we have to come up with some kind of a solution well the easiest solution the most brute force solution would be to just pick this face here begin a new sketch take this edge and Sorry, take this edge and this edge and convert them, turn them into the current sketch, and then launch the fillet command. So we go fillet here, and we're going to add a fillet here onto this corner, and that fillet is going to be 13. And boom, 
That gives us the geometry we need. Now, you know, if some CAD systems will let you pick that region, other CAD systems you have to trace here onto this region. Regardless, it doesn't take that many extra clicks. We go extrude, and then we could say we want that extrude to go up to face, and we want it to go up to this face here, and boom, you're back in business. You can get that part over to the customer. So you just want to be aware of that. those types of scenarios. They do come up sometimes in CAD, and sometimes you have to just patch that region, whether that's like a brute force patch, uh, uh, doing some type of a blend, a loft. As you get deeper and deeper into CAD, you'll learn more workarounds for these types of scenarios, but they do happen occasionally. Okay, and then for my final extrusion, I just need to get this little sleeve area extruded up here. This little sleeve area here extruded up. So it looks like that sleeve area goes up to a height of 14 total or, or a 4 here above the original uh, 10 from the... Uh, am I looking at that right? No, wait, that's not right. Hold on a second. 4 below, 4 above. Just 4 above. Okay, that's it. Just 4 above. Sorry, I was looking at that wrong. Not 14. Just 4. So we'll take this region here. You can just click on it. Uh, click inside of this region. Whoops, is it down below? Is that why I can't get it? There we go. Click on that region there. S key, extrude, and tab, 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 four, enter, enter. Boom, done with that one. And then we're going to assign the correct material. So this is 1060 aluminum. So for this one, I do have the custom Two Tall Toby materials assigned material. This one comes from the custom Two Tall Toby library. And this material is going to be 1060 aluminum. We hit the green check mark, go down here to measure the mass, click on that part, and we're coming up with 94.3 grams. So let's go back into the Two Tall Toby app and see if we got it. 94.3 and enter. And oh yeah, we did it. Congratulations, this is correct. Let's go, let's go, let's go. That's how we do it. So that is your live solve there using Onshape. And uh, wow, not bad guys. We got 12 people who solved that while I was solving it. That is aw 13 people. That is awesome. So 10 minutes and one seconds is the average solve time. And let's take a look at our first 42 and find out who earned the point for this one. So for this one, it looks like the point is going to go to gray. Wow. Five minutes, 21 seconds and MCGA right behind him. Five minutes and 38 seconds and Rambro's workshop, five minutes and 58 seconds. Wow. So congratulations. Uh, and look at Aaron C here. Eight minutes and 19 seconds. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So even though that model looks like it's a pretty simple model, you'll see that our even our world champion speed modelers, you know, did take some time with it. It's not exactly the easiest model in the world. Um, and even though maybe it only has one sketch, there's definitely some hiccups to that model. And that's why I really like that one. So thank you, PC Arduino, for uh, having such a cool model for us to work on. Uh, that was a lot of fun uh, to work with.